meeting to order on August 15th, 2016. Our first order of business is our comments about last week's minutes of August 8th. We read them and made a couple of edits. And uh, Jody, you will read it. Yes, could you already read the. Uh, this is in response to Mr. Clark going on to 18 Pinecrest um, to the, reread the sentence. Um, his recommendation is that the applicant come before the select board. Um, yeah, sorry, like uh, select board um, to discuss the home business. And if it is a home business, it can be screened. Um, we can screen the vehicles. Well, I, I think, I don't think communication is clear. Okay, so Mr. Clark, when he came to us last week, said that the zoning regulations allow for a home business in that zone. So he suggested that the applicant would need to come before the select board and the planning board to make those arrangements. But it's on the applicant to come before to another conversation. Maybe the sound may could try it again based on what you just said. Can we can look at it again, again next week? And if you don't, you know, maybe you can suggest. So, so my understanding is that we we were not acting on anything other than you were going to check, and we can talk about this later on. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and I we were going to try to look up the original complainant. Okay, so we'll work on that and we'll revisit this next week. Thank you. Uh, community input, Mr. Haynes. And guest. And, and guest. Yeah. This is, this is two, two, she lives at 589, Lake Street, Haynes. Um, submitted a building permit request on Thursday with, not Kate, but the building lady. And she said that Tom looks at it, there's many one in. It's, it's, it's just, it's not the whole house, it's just over the structure that is a previous addition that got a building permit that Tom inspected, you know, for occupancy, because that was actually living space. And it's 400 foot square, and the contractor is removing, so there's no burden on the town for waste removal. And I'm just too old to do roofs anymore, so a basic young kid to do it, but he's taking away a part of the deal, so. Um, hypothetically, he, he's got he's got the, the shingles will be drop shipped, so they'll be there one day. It's a one day job for two guys, and they're they're leaving the, they're moving they're leaving the place clean as they leave. That's the end. So we have building permit 2016-127589 Main Street. Oh, no, choo -choo. And, and, choo -choo. and it's, it's the back addition, so it's going to be any disruption for any town traffic, or there's no, the only thing he's going to bring is a dump trailer in a, in a probably one time pickup truck because these are the shingles. It's a one day, it's a, it's a full day job for two guys. So the per fee is $35. Recommend, yeah, recommend that we approve. Thank you. Okay, please don't small give roofing, please don't small give roofing projects we can handle. Mr. Clark is welcome to drive by any time. Don't look in the garage. <laughs> That's a nice All right. So we'll get you all. And that's a good permit for a contractor. Yes. Yep. Caroline is here to make a copy. Accepted your money. Yep. You should be good to go, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. But just so you know, Tom is looking at all of our building permits. Usually, it wasn't explained to me as a week out. It was just, it wasn't explained to me. But I understand. I respect yeah, the process. It just, yeah, it, we technically we have 30 days. We like to process them every week. This is as quickly as we can. I just thought I'd throw myself on the mercy. Yeah. Yes, you, and, and it worked. It worked. <laughs> I brought the dog. Good luck. Good luck. Dog always help. Yeah, yeah that's good. Your good thank you. Thank you. So, sir, it, behind, would you like to come talk to us? Um, actually, is this the time and place for that? My name is Douglas Watson. I'm at 63 Pine Street. And I'd like to speak to concerns of the wastewater drain there. Oh, you own the house at the I own the house at 63 Pine, Pine. yes, Why I do. Why don't you come right up and have a seat? I'm not on trial, am I? No, you're not. Oh, 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 thank you for sure thanks, <laughs> thanks for coming in. Where are you in? Don't worry. We, we appreciate it. So, Norm took me aside one day and just said, "La la la la," and 
you know, I'm not an engineer, and I said, well, you know, send me email or something, or I'll mention it to the board, and I'll mention it to the stormwater committee. I'm, I'm pointing at Jeff, he's just yep. a part of it. Yeah, and I've already talked to Jeff. Okay. So, so the stormwater committee is reasonably new uh, for the town, and when I mentioned that to them, they had requested that we actually get a design plan from Norm, or you, someone, so that we can review it. And we are, we are honestly leery about allowing this because um, we are an MS4 permitted community. And so what we are trying to do with that permit is to reduce the amount of storm water that goes through our storm drains and into the Salmon Falls River. So, so a, a request to, to add water is, is unusual. So we, we're going to go, we know we're trying to uh, do this fairly and impartially and slowly so that we arrive at the right decision. The other concern is that we can't, we the town, don't want to assume any maintenance because of this tie-in to this structure, and which is, I believe, is not necessarily in good shape. Is that, is this the catch basin that's not in good shape that it's being tied into? I, uh, I've inspected it several times. I mostly use the basin. I know that. We had that one, that one issue with the hot top collapse, but that could have been from water, you know, a year's worth of water carrier. So this isn't the, uh, there's more than one structure on Pine Street, I'm assuming. So this is the one that's, that's uh, deteriorating from the inside that we're concerned about collapsing? Are it's the same right? structure that we're talking about, yes. And we don't have any concerns on it, tying into it? I looked into it, it, it looks fine. I, what I'm saying is, is I put gravel back in that sinkhole, and it's been six months now, and nothing has settled. And with all the heavy rains and everything we've got, so I think that that, I think that that. The the issue is is, first of all, making the connection, yep. right? So it's town property, and at at minimum the. The stormwater committee said it should be there should be an, an easement granted. So. If, if we were to go along with this, so that the, and that said that the maintenance of that connection and piping would not be the town's responsibility. Uh, and there were other suggestions for how to divert some of the water rather than using the storm drain. I'm not going to be able to relate them to you, uh, but the stormwater committee could if you uh, wanted to come chat with them. Um, and they, they, they understood the nature of the issue, that there's, there's angles from the garage, and they see that there, there's a lot of water that could be puddling in your, in your, on your land. So, so that's kind of... Go ahead, and I'm just waiting for you to finish. Yeah. And, and this is going on rapid, I gather. Oh, yeah. Okay. The water that I'm dealing with is your water. It comes down the road, the majority of it. I've got sandbags on the edge of the road. I have a guy that's lived in town all my life, never been here, my own fault, but I've never asked the town for anything. And this is your water that comes down the road that I used to have a berm on the edge of my driveway that this winter has gone. Uh, you know what I mean? Just through the winter, use plowing and so on, the berm is gone. But the majority of the water that I get is the town's water. So, so I'm a little... You can tell that I'm a little here. I'm trying to fix it at my own expense and not want anything from you. And you're dragging your feet. We are a little bit. Yeah, yes, you are. are. So with that being said, I don't know if I go through norm to rescind the permit or because I can't wait. I have to do something right away. This is a time of year when you have to do something. We're going to be running into water problems, and then I won't be able to dig down. I won't be able to do anything. I need to have some direction from you that either it isn't or it is. I understand that my neighbor's got an issue with a sinkhole too yep. that just yeah, just came up and I don't want to be, you know, I'm, at, I'm in a little bit of a spot here that I could do other things, I guess, and and I just have to do them. I need to do something now, or soon. So that berm that's no longer there, was that helpful? Did it help the situation? Again, I never, I didn't have much of a water problem until maybe the last year or so. Was it a sand or was it cotton? No, I actually went out and built the berm on my hands and knees with pavement. 
that stayed for quite a while because I, I know how to, I've worked construction my whole life. So I did that on my own. This winter and through the use, and it's been there for a long time, it's no longer there. The water that I'm giving is, is coming down the road. The first. So it's hard for me, right, that, that I assume that it's your water if it's coming down the road, and, and I, here I am going at my own expense to do all of this, and it's kind of like you really don't want me to do it. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, if you really don't like want that. me to do it, ma'am, I'll do something else. Yeah. Well, I'll figure something else out. Yeah. But it's the first time I've ever asked the town for anything. I want that on record, and, and you're really not helping me too much. I understand. Well, we haven't said no. <laughs> we haven't said no. So I am going to come back and ask you, uh, so the berm was helpful? Oh, absolutely. The water ran so, down the side of the road. So then where does that, is that the water that then sort of just is percolated where does that water go? It, let's say if that, that berm was uh, was functional, if the berm was in place. Go into the catch basin. The catch basin that you're talking about. Basin. Yeah. The basin that you're all talking about, that I would even have a problem if there's a problem with the basin, it would be kind of foolish for me to tie into it. And you asked me to assume uh, maintenance right, and change my deed. You know, it's it's. I'm looking at a tough picture, and the only reason I came in here is I maybe I went the wrong route by having Norm rather than myself come in here and appear in front of you and, and ask you these questions. But if it's a big problem and it's something that's going to take a little while, I need to go in another direction, that's all. Well, so what what's involved in rebuilding the berm? What would that be? But not hardly anything at all, it does it? It's a band-aid. Yeah, it's a band-aid fix. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a permanent fix like he's looking to do. I'm, I, I fix this up to stay there the rest of my life. So what we've asked Norm, and he he called me some, at some point today, but I haven't had time to call him back. We would we would just like a statement of what is going to happen. You know, where the tie, you know, a diagram of, of the size of the pipe. Something that has to be done by an engineer now. Do I have to get no, this out? No, no, just Norm. Can no. They're looking to put a two foot structure. You have to give it to us right. in writing, okay? Just like the building permits. You see what I mean? It just, I, okay. Yeah, just. So let us is know. that what you're asking for? Yes, that's what we're asking. Well, that way we can show it to them. We can show it to us. You know, we we had no. I did. I checked in with Norm several times and asked for. A and design. I know, and, I, and I've had a uh, uh, reference with. Uh, you know, he's been keeping me updated on what's going. And again, I probably should have did it directly with you, and then hired a contractor after that, maybe, or looked into a contractor after that. But I'm just, you know, right we're, now we're, Yeah, we're kind of, you know, this is an unusual request. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, it, we're, we're working with it, so we're, not, we're okay. Am I in, is there any going to, is, if, if everything was okay, would there be an issue with the stormwater committee? Because I knew they're newly formed. I've already had a lot of questions from individuals in my door yard uh, on what's going on with my door yard. I'm sorry about that. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. I, I have no problems. I'm you, not. You know, they're doing this for the, for the good of the town. I mean, we have, and we have some obligations. That. And, and I understand that. You know, the, we're all I trying, to, we're to, all know trying to do the go. right thing for the town and for the residents of the town individually when we can. Yeah. So So you need something in writing as well. We need to look at what the plan is. So so people who have the stormwater committee folks who have more expertise can can help us figure out whether this is okay or not. And one last question before. Looking at it from the outside, though, I've already seen some communications about me changing my deed so yes. that I would take the maintenance of it. And it's pretty involved. Yeah, that, not that's big. summertime big in the ground involved. Well, you mean it would take you too long to get that in place? <coughs> well, I, I have no idea. I'm not real happy. I wouldn't be real uh, about changing my deed. With the registry. Well, see, when, you sell, take a little while, I know when that. you sell your house, though, we need to make sure that whoever buys that house and I understand what you're you know, doing. assumes know the that. same responsibility for that piping. Otherwise, okay. we have no we have no recourse because they would come to us and say, "Why? Well, I didn't put that in there." I and and that person would be correct. So that's you know that's why we would need something like that. Is that all I need to do? That's the first step, yes. That oh, wasn't bad at all. Thank you. Nice to meet you. You guys have a great day. Thank you for coming, and we appreciate it. Thank you.
Other community business, Mike? Um, I was wondering, uh, since uh, well, I've got a new uh, leech field in my yard we've, now, we've noticed. and it's not just it's not just cosmetic, but and I'm not and I don't know I can't I don't know what what the story is with the snow you know the, the snow blower you have no other place to put the snow I know that but in South Berwick they take the they have they fall I don't know if you see it they follow the snow blower same as he's got the same rig you have no he doesn't they fall no 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 they, no, they got a trackless machine okay whatever okay but anyway the bottom line is the snow goes into the dump truck right is there any way that could be I mean, is that we talking big bucks there or what? As opposed to, as opposed to what? Just I'm, what I'm saying is to keep that. I think what I think, and I think Jeff knows what I'm talking about. It's not his fault. I think the the salt from the road is going to the sidewalk, which he snow blows, and then it goes. It's going on to lawns, and I don't have a lawn now in the front, and I want to keep it now, especially since I have a a leach field. I don't know what, you know, what the cost of that would be. It would be going all the way down the street. To have uh, to have something like self brewing. Well, so the bottom line is money. Man in the trucks to do it. And I, I and I I'll be honest with you. I've never tried blowing snow in the back of a truck without machine. I don't know. If, I don't even know if it can be done. Um, well, you said they have a different right. They have they a different. They have a total different machine in self brewing. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I just I'm just wondering. You know. Yeah, they got yeah. they got a, a chute that actually blows trucks. So the, tr the trackless, they have a trackless, and that chute comes up and molds in the truck, so the truck drives right beside the machine as they go. So it would, something like that would be helpful, not, not only to keep salt off people's yards, but just to enable us to keep the sidewalks clear, right? I'm not saying that we, we can or will, but I'm just trying to... Yeah, I mean, it, it, it eventually we'll have to do that when we update our downtown area. Right now, I don't like I said. What we use is a skid steer now with a, with a blower on it. I don't. I don't think it has the oomph to get the snow up, into a truck. Into, into a truck. truck. And if we did that, it's not only the equipment that has to change, but now we've got two people that are doing the job. Three more. What do you mean three more? It'd be me and three other trucks hauling the snow. So a total of four. Okay. Plowing, and then you have one guy doing the sidewalk, and one guy doing the Yeah, one guy in a skid steer or the piece of equipment running it, and you need to haul the snow away, so you're going to have a series of trucks. I guess I thought you didn't get to the sidewalks until the rest of the stuff was done. I don't, because I'm the only one that has So then wouldn't there be somebody, I mean, we'd have to pay, but wouldn't there be somebody available? I mean, if you don't do sidewalks now until the storm is practically done, then it, it's a question of paying somebody additional hours in order to do that. Oh yeah. Again, we're just exploring, right? Yes. It'd be a lot so of wouldn't that hours. necessarily be a new person? Yeah, it would because and you have to need two trucks because the snow blower is here and you have a truck next to it. Once this truck is full, it drives away and dumps it off. The second truck is waiting in line, and then this snow blower keeps going. This truck pulls into this spot. He loads up. This one comes back around. It's, it's just a, a lot of it, additional man hours. It's more expensive. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of additional man hours. And, and right now, I'm the only licensed driver with a CDL. Yeah. Your other my truck. I have one truck. And the guy with the snowblower sit there for 20 minutes waiting for the next person for him to come back. Yeah. So, yeah, it'd be a, it would be a huge process on like, the, the bigger communities. Yeah. Like so to have five trucks and, yeah. and are they that much bigger than us? Yeah. Yeah, in the winter time they hire three full time guys. That's true, they have a full time town administrator, don't they? Yeah, they have they staff, the same. four, five, five full time guys year round and then in the winter time they bring an additional yeah. three guys on full time all the time. And some towns will just hire out the trucks like they hire out a church or a gaggy. Mm -hmm. Just the truck, just to do that. Which could get very costly at eighty dollars an hour, as we know. Well, you've been hearing us. Guess I got my answer. Yeah. Yeah, probably, huh? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I had an idea it would, you know, it would be expensive anyway, but thought I'd ask. Yeah, no, it's good, and it's good for us to know 
to, to know about these issues because if we don't, then we can't we can't um, that's what I'm looking for. we can't take advantage of something that might turn up and we say oh that would help blah 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 you know what I mean so it's good for us to hear and I appreciate your coming in letting us know but right this very minute it sounds like it's a it's a pretty expensive proposition. So. We could try. How? At least once with our with our existing equipment, see if it could throw into the truck. I can try it, but it's like I said, it's or even one of the smaller trucks. I can, yeah, I can try it, but once again, we're talking man hours, and, and, and if I can get even, you know, most of the time when the storm's over, they're in their car and gone before the truck's even idled down. <laughs> That's true too. Don't have, it's not a full-time person. But yeah, right. I mean, the guys that work for us have full-time jobs true. that they man during the day. So many hours they could have the truck. Well, no, that doesn't matter. No, it's a calorie. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a scheduling. Can we talk about it in a budget season? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank He's got no choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I try, I try not to blow. I try not to blow it out in people's yards. I try and blow it directly right beside the machine. But there are challenges. I mean, you know, there are challenges in the village with regard to that. Yeah, in the village, yeah. um, at this point in time, my machine doesn't fit on any of the sidewalks, so I can't snowball. But when the time comes when we update the village and we, we do our sidewalks, yeah, we're. we're we're talking some some manpower and more issues we're going to be facing. But even as you get closer to town hall, yeah. I think that there's some houses that are practically yeah. on the yeah. sidewalk, yeah. Yeah. which makes for yeah. even more of a challenge yeah. as well. So and even yes. in October, you'll start seeing the older people start driving around the little snow blowers on the sidewalk to practice because there's so many like holes and sidewalks mm. get narrow. And so they actually have to do dry mm -hmm. runs in yeah. October. Yeah. It's the funniest thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can try blowing it. I'll do my best to try and blow it ahead of me as far as I can. And then when I can't blow it no further, I can unload and blow it. I mean, I'll try yeah, my like, Because I know what you have, what's your issue. You know what I mean? It's, you just don't have any place to put it. The whole object is to get it off the sidewalk. Mm. Yeah, I'll do my best to try not to... to uh, yeah, I don't know really what you could. It's hard. I don't know what you said, just blow it right on the edge of the rocks is usually what I try and do. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Sorry, Mike. No. I think I had to ask you. Yeah. Okay. Any other community questions? All right. So we'll go right to department head business. I don't see the building code inspector, the health inspector, fire. I thought he was here. He was here. He's talking to Caroline. Oh, okay, so, highway. All right, um, Suzanne mentioned earlier today about getting a uh, price for a, a camera and a pipe on, on Well, street. let's set the stage for everybody. Okay. So, we got, Caroline got an email from the, yeah, the landowner who, is that the house like just down from it the is. person who yes. was talking to us? Okay, so this is the sinkhole, yep. the sinkhole one. And so, I guess, They've been frustrated, and just that the homeowner has trouble coming to a Monday meeting. And so we got that email through a mother, or I don't know exactly what. So their request is for us to camera to see if, by doing that, we can figure out whether it's our responsibility or not. If it is, then we can budget, hopefully, to fix it next budget season. Is that that's my understanding? Is that? Is that what you heard? That's spot on. And is that? That's what yeah. I heard. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So that's that's the situation. So we thought we would at least ask Jeff to give us a, a quote for what the camera would cost. So um, I called I called three companies today. I called uh, Eastern Pipe, Northeast Sewer and Drain, which I haven't heard back from, and I called Felix Pipes, um, which they all do the same thing: wiring, camera. And Eastern Pipe came in at seven hundred fifty dollars the camera, or thirteen hundred dollars to bring a back to truck and camera. And what I mean by that is, if there's a clog in the pipe, 
the camera's not going to be able to go through it. So we're going to get charged at $750, whether it goes eight, eight feet in the pipe this, or yeah. 500 feet in the pipe. Uh -huh. So he can bring a vacuum truck for $1,300 to does that clean the pipe. Guarantee that? What is that? So. So when a vacuum truck comes, they have a. What, the only thing I can look at is whoops, it's a. It's a fitting they put on the end of a hose, and it's high pressure. And what it does is it'll burrow its way through. through a rotor reader. Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. And it'll, it'll eat its way through the debris if there's any. Um, so, can we take our chances and just go with the with the camera? I don't know. I mean, last time I looked up through the pipe, you could see it's running water. But do I know if there's anything else in there? No. Um, so it's up to the board on what decision they would like to make on that this step. So it's thirteen hundred dollars to have a back truck come in and have it camera, and we get a DVD of the camp the pipe after. Or we can just hire them to camera it. And so, and this pipe starts. This pipe starts right on Pine Street, and at daylight. In the road. Yep, pretty much well in that in the driveway of the residence. It's it's kind of a weird place for a basin, but it's, it's partially in the driveway. I believe it's in the town's right of way, but it's in the driveway, and it daylights into the brook on the back side of their property. It's a stream that runs through the backside. And you, so have you been able to see the outfall area? Yep. And there is water that comes? Yep. So what do we, so, so what are, why would it be helpful to do the camera operation? What, what do we think it might tell us? To see if there's any holes in the pipe up near the basin where they're claiming that the hole is, and that's where the hole is in the driveway. Material may be falling into the pipe and being carried out. So if you camera it, Shows a 360 degree <coughs> down the pipe. So that would cause the sinkhole, the material from the, the sink, yes. from the surrounding ground yes. is coming into our that pipe and being carried away. That would produce the sinkhole. Yes. The other the other thing that we thought might that maybe there was a tree at some point is that the other another operating theory or do we stump? Think, yeah, stump a stump. But do we think what are, what are the chances are that we think it, it's the first? I can't see eight feet underground. Yeah, so it could go either way. It could go either way. I'm hoping that the pipe's fine and that it's a stump area in the property. And then what would that homeowner do? That's their responsibility. Mm -hmm. that's True. Okay. All right. And the fix, if there is a fix, just roughly, we have to fix it. Um, if we slip, we, well, you could get an easement and take the pipe off, or we could slip one. Is we'll it stay. big enough to slip yeah. one? Yeah. I remember correctly, it's a 15 inch corrugated steel pipe. So, what they would do is they they put this, it's like plastic, so it looks like a fire hose. They drag it through and they put steam to it. It forms the end of the pipe. And it's hard and it's a structural. It's okay. the only way I can explain it. Yeah, well, that's a good idea. So, they, they cap the end of it on one end and they blow steam through it and it pressurizes it and it goes up to the diameter. What, what, what do we think? Why do we think there might be a stump there? What leads you to that? Because there's a hole. Well, can you see a stump? Is that... No, I can't see a stump. Why would a hole? There? I mean, you see there's a hole. There's a hole probably the size of a basketball. Okay. And it hasn't gotten any bigger or any smaller. So. Okay. And you can take a peek too. Yeah. And in, the, in the pavement or next to the pavement? So if the residence driveway is right here. I drove by this, but I don't remember. That sinkhole was right here. Our culvert runs right here. Mm -hmm. So, so I didn't fill the purchase order out completely yet because I didn't know what way the board wanted to go with. with that. Well, that's why we're discussing. I mean, we haven't even decided that we're going to do it to say nothing of option A versus option B. So, what are the other two quotes? Uh, are they the same thing. Yeah. No. Uh, Felix came in at $850, and Northeast Sewer never got back to me. So, so with, let's say, Felix, the last, the, the last one there on your list? That's just the camera device. That's just the camera. So if, if that company runs into a problem, you would probably have to stop as well. Yeah. And he didn't offer that no. rotor router. Anywhere in our budget. 
Well, we came eight thousand under one day. Well, what? My, yeah, my suggestion for this, as well as for some of the other uh, things that we're trying to find, like the cruiser, what, as, as soon as we get the final bid from Pike and a quote on the siding for this building, then, then those, are, those, are the, those are two things that we're trying to figure out if we can, um, you know, are they going to be in? Much higher, you know. So we need to ensure that the what that pipe final price is, because what what I if we wanted to go ahead with this, it could come out of the road budget. The camera. It just sort of depends on whether we have to divert some of that road budget to the town building to the repair of the siding. We know what the cruiser cost is, and the other the other potential uh, cost is the engineering cost for the town hall. Right? Now, when I spoke with him, you know, he, he suggested that if we're going to go ahead with the proposal to uh, do, the, do the drainage, he suggested getting the engineering part done this fall to the tune of about ten dollars to $12,000. Now, he did say that we could have some kind of a budget plan or something. So, and, uh, so we may be able to do just a partial payment this year, partial payment next year, or something like that. So, so those are the things that you know we need to get a clear idea where we stand. I think before we go ahead and do this. So that's that's my that's that's my sense. Jody and Mike, I just heard anything. So yeah, no, I think yeah. we can wait about a week or two, can we? So we know where. Or Probably three, yeah, closer to three, because then we'll have the engineering proposal, I think. So these guys, just to let the board know, they want the day we staff, and they're probably two weeks out on that. Okay. Is there a, is there a time of year which they can no longer do this? Winter. Is, pardon? Winter. Yes, but if we can wait till even October, I'm not saying that we would, but if we wait until October even. We should do that. Yeah. And that's still in budget season, so we can then determine if it is our issue. What it might cost us all of the things. I mean, at the same time, I could get a price if it, if it is our issue on what it would cost us. Yeah, when we when we get there, that would be super. Jody, do you are you uh, are you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Of the two options, we might as well start that conversation. I mean, what? What is your opening salvo in, in that uh, that conversation about just uh, cameraing alone with or cameraing with that piece of equipment, the rotor rooter back you something? You're gonna see daylight from the other end, you said? The outfall end? Yep. <clears throat> if you, take, you go down the outfall end and okay. you stick a light up in there, the guy down at the basin end can see the light. Pretty much it's oh from point to point yes yeah, so I don't think you might not need that oh, well, I again, see. I know, yeah you, you don't want to eight feet in it's like oops sorry now I'm stuck how, how much um, bucks, how much so. clearance does the camera need do you know take some pictures it's, it's good size it's probably yay long by yay tall and the head so the fact that you see daylight stuff. doesn't doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily okay. guarantee that the camera's going to fit the whole way yeah, it's not a smaller size so scope no. to larger no, it's, it's got like six or eight ties on it. And it'll fit through this side? Yeah, yeah they're small. It's, <clears throat> they're just small. Like I said, it's the by all the eight tall. And on the head of it, it's got a bunch of cameras, so it can see 360 degrees as you are. Oh, yeah, just because you can see like that. Yeah, okay. not for equipment that size. Right. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. yeah, just, yeah, because, you know, if you're going to spend that amount of money it would be foolish then not to get a, a complete read so 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 we haven't decided we're doing it but it sounds like if we were to do it we would want that approach so as you're talking to the person who hasn't responded yet maybe you would see if they have that option of what that would cost all right so here we go we that one. Welcome back, yes <laughs> Yeah.
And thank you for getting those figures right away. Much appreciated. Yes. So we got salt bids in or quotes in for this year. Um, the town has to decide who they'd like to go with. Granite State Minerals or Molten Salt. Um, there's a couple dollar difference between them. Um, we do a thousand ton like we did last year. The difference between Granite State and this is about six thousand dollars. The difference between the two salts is their salt's really wet and it clumps up all the time. Their salt is dry and you have no trouble. So it's up to the town what they want to do. But uh, we need to send these back so we can we can uh, begin the process of lowering salt. So based on what we normally on a sort of general average, this overall this would this would be six thousand more than this one. Yes. On a thousand ton. So what that's is the clump? That's on a thousand. And how much you use? I don't know what we're at now. I can call and ask what we're at. I don't know what we used for last year. Yeah. Last year we used more than a thousand. Yeah. I was looking at time, just I'm not sure what we're at the time. Yeah. And put in a the idea is to make sure you block in enough salt because absolutely the weather gets bad like it did two years ago, which I was on like saying it might, you're not a town left out of saying some of you, another town already has privilege in the salt before you. So pretty much Grand State Minerals come in at fifty one dollars and seventy three cents a ton. And one salt came in at fifty eight twenty seven a ton. So, so if you do a thousand ton. What, I, what I'm trying to figure out, yeah, I understand. What what is a thousand ton as far as our usage? Is that is that we upped it last year? Um, and we came under. We have we didn't use a thousand. We didn't ton use a thousand last year. Last year. Okay. So what's the yeah. so yeah. it clumps and what does that mean as far as it means it freezes up in your truck when you go to dig into the bottom, you get clumps and you can't use the salt side for the other side. Um, and what it, what what it is is it's they deliver wet salt. It's wet and it sits, it freezes. So you get, so it's almost like a, an egg. So your outside shell is real hard. The colder it gets, the thicker the shell gets. When your salt's dry, it doesn't have, it, it doesn't, that doesn't happen. So when you're loading it onto the truck, yeah. you see a clump? Yeah. And, and, and you put it aside and then, then I mean. Then we throw it away, we get rid of it all it out back and just dispose of it because you can't use it. Or it'll jam up in your truck and break a bed chain and you're stuck shoveling a sander out. It's a headache at 2 in the morning is pretty much what it is. Have you mentioned it to them? Yeah, there's actually been several towns that have gotten away from Granite State just for that fact. The Dole was one of them. We've used, as of the last quarterly report, we used 68.8% of our still budget. We budgeted about salt. We budgeted 23, we've used 15,000. It doesn't tell us the tonnage. So, Carol, it, it's just easily calculatable if you wanted me to. Well, I'm just, is it, I think he answered it. A thousand, we didn't use a thousand last year. So, so that's roughly more or less a year's worth, give or, give or take. Yeah. So it's a difference of about $6,000, give or take, right? It could be, you know, four to eight. You know, but the, so so unless the board is 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 ready to go one way or the other, I'm just trying to figure out what 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 okay clumps. What does that mean to us? So I think you, you, know, you said that I don't, I'm not happy about the idea of dumping it somewhere. I mean, this is salt. So so let me ask again. You they know that they have this problem, and they're. They yeah, I've rejected several of them. Back when we were not, they don't. No, they don't like to talk to us all because it's expensive to talk to. Yeah, it's expensive not to make a sale too. Well, board, what do you think? And it's foolish to have a product you can't use. It just it just makes life hard when when you're trying to deal with it. You know, it's just you know it's just. You know, it jams up. You know, jams up in the sand. Is I think we had this conversation. Yeah, we had it. This is more like we yeah. Two years ago, we switched for this reason. All right, but but it's good for us. It's good to revisit to ensure. You know, it's a it was a it's a significant difference in cost. Yes. 
So it's good for us to talk about this and reiterate how we feel. So that's Significantly more than what we pay this year. Yeah. Why is it that has, has salt increased? I'd have to look at last year's contract. Well, it's right. It's uh, I think our budget was twenty seven off thousand. Unless I'm, I'm completely blanking on that line. Uh, I know we raised it up to a thousand times. Twenty three thousand dollar line. Yeah, yes. not fifty some odd thousand. But we raised it. Remember, we raised it we because raised not last year, the year before, there was salt shortages. By rights, they could have cut us off at our minimum. At our. I understood that we raised, we raised it to that, we and did. now we're now we're doubling it again, more than. No, that, we, we, you guys are the ones that wrote a thousand ton last year. We went from like six hundred ton to seven hundred ton to a thousand. I, I, I think I'm getting lost in this conversation. Jody, did you just figure out that a thousand ton cost fifty somewhat? Yeah, a thousand ton at fifty-eight. It's fifty-four thirty-eight per ton. If somebody wants to do the math. So they were not times a. I'm sorry. This past spring, late winter, earlier this year, we were paying fifty-four thirty-eight a ton. So I don't know what he quoted for a price. So I don't know if that means they went up on their. They did. They went up four dollars a ton. So they went up. We don't have to buy a thousand tons of salt. No, we secured. No, it's We've just a thousand ton. A thousand ton, and then after that, they wouldn't have the honor, right? So say we signed a contract for five hundred ton. Just, just we signed five hundred ton. They're only obligated to give us 500 ton. Chances are they, they would give us more oil in the municipality. But by rights, they only have to honor 500 ton. So we don't have to pay, we don't have to buy the entire thousand. No, no we, buy, we buy only what we use. We had that conversation last year when we upped it. It was That's why we secure it. We, want, we were securing access to a thousand ton. We didn't actually buy a thousand ton. And when I, responsible for buying a thousand tons. No, I understand that too. All right, so I think I was under the impression that we used about a thousand no. tons, a thousand tons more or less. Not that we were signing a cup. Do you see the difference? Yeah. So, so we are using roughly, it's hard to make a decision when you don't have you know, data. So can we figure out over the last five years how much tonnage we've used so that we have some idea what what is going to well, cost. Well, we switched to straight product last year. We no longer use sand as well. Okay, so it's only we only have how many years? Just one year. One year of straight. Can we get the tonnage for last year? Is that yes? Easily. Did, did you just okay? So she has the folder for what we've spent this fiscal year, but I can pull last fiscal year and go add it up. If you want to go add up, if you want me to go add the tonnage. Sort of. So we're looking for the tonnage for like. Season. So that would be a season. So I would start in when he capped off the shed in September, whenever he does that, and then whatever he spent through March or April. I could go to that. Would be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Jody, if you don't. Yep. Are you finished? Can I? Um, I'm just curious as to why we have prices, though. That was a mix up and it was refunded to us. Okay, good. It was just paperwork. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not paying for this. Yeah, it was charged when they come in. So it's just a paper trail. Thank you. Uh, oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, it looks like, it looks like, uh, Morton saw went up $4 a ton last year. I didn't look at that. So, if, I mean, if the town wants to go to Grand State, we'll go to Grand State and Oh, I don't know. I don't know that we've said that. I mean, no, no, okay, just four dollars. Four dollars. So, how much time do we have to determine this? If you can wait another week, I just wanted to. Did we, sh we should probably be able to do it. I think if we get the, the figures. Yeah. I mean, I'm concerned if if that what we budgeted at 
$23,000 has to go up. But, the, you know, like, like I've said 200 times before, depending on what we put off a product is depending on what Mother Nature throws at us. When, we, when, it's, when, it's, when it's sleet and freezing rain, we put a lot more salt out. When the temperature is 32 degrees and it's a wet snow, we barely put any out. When the temperature is four below and it's snowing out, we put more salt out. It's, it, there's no storm is ever the same, and it, and it probably never will be. So, it, you know, like last year, we used quite a bit of salt because it was a lot of freezing rain last year wow. we had. And, you know, you, you put product down, scrape it. Put product down, scrape it. Keep, keep, keep the rows kneeling. Um, it depends on what we get for weather. I know, it's difficult, and towns do run out of budget dollars to, and to scramble and look for. Uh, what I'm trying to determine is, try, I'm trying to get a feel, is if our newly upped $23,000 budget is still not going to be sufficient. And it's worked not. for the last couple of years. I mean, it's just one of the things, if you go over, you go over. If you go under, you come under. I, yeah, going just, over is one thing. You, you saw how I get concerned if yeah. the figure was going to be 50-some-odd thousand dollars, right? Because it's from 23 to 50-some-odd yeah. thousand dollars is a significant difference. Yeah. So I, I've been walked off that cliff. <laughs> <laughs> because the thousand dollars is just the... What, what is Morton quoting as? 58 dollars. 58 dollars, I believe. Yeah. So at that rate, you, you can get 394, 394 units of salt. Then you're done. Well, let's see what we did use. Right. All right. So at that cost, we had 394 tons. So we're based on our current budget. What's that? All right, thank you, Michael. Salt's going to save us money, right, unless we have a bad winter. So, yeah, I mean, you use less salt than sand salt mix. It's, we put, you know, most times I'm only putting 200 pounds of wind mile down. And that's, I mean, that's just All right, let's, let's, a wheelbarrow. Let, let's go on with your, with our combined agenda until Caroline gets yeah, back. Yeah, we just put the new stuff yeah, on the yeah, the, uh, yeah, the the calibration. calibration. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we didn't get full season out of that either. Right. So that'll help. Yeah. It's on both machines, right? Yeah. Yeah. Two of our drugs. The third one we can't put it on because it doesn't have hydration. Okay. So um, we have a pole saw that's 10, 11 years old that uh, we've been having issues with. Um, so I brought a belly of small angles to look at it because the pipe's bent. It doesn't extend out. It doesn't run. It doesn't like to stay running. Um, we got a price back to, to bring that saw back up to, to new. We're at five hundred dollars. By the time you replace the pole, the gas tank's got a leak in it. The mounts are broke. The carburetor is gone. The lubricator is gone on for the chain. How much is the new one? Uh, five hundred ninety-three dollars for a brand new saw. Take it out of the equipment. So five hundred dollars to fix it yeah. and five hundred and ninety-three dollars per new one? Yes. Okay. I have nineteen hundred dollars on the equipment line item. Uh, and we did stop one that we rebudgeted. We should not have, no. Well some of this we did rebudget some of his lines based on his own his son Jeff's recommendation. Yeah, so do you agree with it that we did not rebut? Yeah. All right, you could. All right. So I called three companies. I called Tri City Tool Crib. Thank you. And they came in at six fifty nine ninety five. And I called uh, North Country Tractor, and they came in at six fifty nine. Some change. Fifty five. And Elliott Small Engines came in at five hundred ninety three. So there's a purchase order number of uh, 700 to Elliott Small Engines for a steel HT-131 full sales. I mean, someone else would just like to pick up this. I'll move purchase order number 
700 alias small engines for one steel HT131 full saw for 500 magnitude. Okay. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you for getting the quotes. We appreciate that. Hey, you're welcome. I think I remember the data. I'm writing it down now. Do you have a 353 ton? Okay, and we 390 are budget. So, so we add, add probably another 60 ton to that because my salt shit's happening right now. So I'll top off with this easy to use this year budget and I'll stop. Hopefully yeah. we don't get a could at budget time, you know, consider adding, you know, a couple of thousand and maybe bring it up to twenty five and that's a heck of a lot of difference from different than going to Well right, like I said, two two whatever. years ago when we had salt shortages. No, I understand were, yes. I'm sold I'm sold on getting the contract to that amount. I thought you I was understanding that we we use about a no. thousand no. tons. That's that was why I got a little crazy. No. So again, I back off the cliff. Thanks to everybody, and uh, I think we're good. <laughs> okay. So so given that, are we ready to act on? Um, do we want further discussion about Morton versus Grand State? You know the policy that we haven't yet adopted yet, it does say that, you know, we're trying to provide the best value for the town, which is not necessarily the lowest bidder. I don't want to buy a product that can't be used. Mm. All right, so hearing uh, some consensus here, do you, what, do we, uh, you don't have a purchase order, do you want us to just? I think you just need to sign that you agree. Okay, so let's have, a, could I have a, I will entertain a, Did we purchase salt from Morton this year? I move that we continue our relationship with Morton Salt, continue to buy salt to 2016. And sign the contract. And sign the contract. Second. All right, I have first and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 I don't know where, thank you. We don't get a little yellow umbrella. And I know, you know, we're used, we're used to these little little fancy things that point us yeah, where we have to sign. Yeah, fancy about that. I mean, probably <laughs> The little umbrellas are not in the budget for the highway property. Maybe next year. Little rubber spider. Is that just one signature? Is that all? It should be. Yeah. Just uh, right. authorizing a woman. Right. Thank you. Again, thank and you. You're going to maximum. Yes. That's what we agreed to, right? A thousand ton contract. Thank you. Up to. Well, right. Because and uh, right, and I understand that process. We order, we pay. We order, we pay. Yeah, hopefully we uh, don't have a go close to that. It's a lot of snow days. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Does the board have anything for me to We do. Yeah, we we do. Time. So we uh, want to keep you, want to uh, update all of us on uh, emails from the Water District Commission from John England specifically on the structures. I think the one that, that he was going to have continental fix, I think they're all set for doing that. There was one. There was one case, though, where I had to write back to him because I wasn't sure if what he said made it our problem or he was just describing it and, yes, it was going to be his problem. Uh, something we're going to have to determine. You know, who, to, who, who takes care of what? Because it seems like everything gets slung on to my plate when it comes to and issues with the water department and our budget. So. What he said was, the manhole, this is from John England at the Water District, the manholes that are catching Jeff's plow in Stockdale Circle were shown to Michael Point by Jeff a few weeks back. These will be corrected by us when Continental begins shimming the structures on Main Street to prepare for paving. Okay, so that's one. That, so there's that. The manhole with the cone, if you had a chance to look at that. Oh, I've seen that. The manhole with the cone is not one that needs to be shimmed. It requires repair to the eroded area with some asphalt, as do most in the development, which is common for a road of that age. 
So how are they planning on, I want to know how they're planning on fixing the structures. Are they just going to take some asphalt and shim up to them and night peel them off with the asphalt? Or are they going to actually, you know, said these will be cut around the structure, set it the way it should be, and pave it back in? All I can tell you yeah, is no, what told us. These will be corrected by us when Continental begins shimming the structures on Main Street. So, you know, to me, that structure on uh, Stockdale is deteriorating. To me, that's the water department's problem. But, I mean... He also said, can I just finish and we'll come back to that? There's more. The manhole on Locust Street was repaired July 14th, which was conveyed to Jeff by myself when the repair was done. Yes, they can carry it. Okay, so Locust Street is done. So the at issue are several structures in Stockdale that he's they're going to have Continental do something to, and then this other one with the cone, which he said is uh, exhibiting a different problem, but in, in saying that, he didn't say, and it's the town's responsibility or it's our responsibility, we're going to fix that too. So I asked him that and he, didn't, he hasn't responded back. So what is your assessment of what I just read? Seems like he's pulling it off the things, what it sounds like. So he, well, he did say that they would have Continental begin shimming the structures to prepare for paving. I don't know exactly what I don't know what that means either. But shimming to me means just shimming it to fixing it right is and shimming it are two different things because the shim I'm going to peel off with my plow. And the, uh, so what's, what's happening is around a lot of the structures, whether they're drain manholes or catch basins or, or, or uh, sewer manholes, is the asphalt's deteriorating around them. So do we, have, do we have a policy saying that the water department takes care of their their manholes and we take care of our structures or am I taking care of everybody's structures? See what I'm saying? Well I've been taking care of everybody's structures and it's you know you know two ton at a time, two ton at a time, two ton at a time adds up, especially when my budget's thin to begin with. And and not to mention they have three people working there. I'm a one man band. So I'm doing their work. <laughs> well, is it true that the issue is because the road is deteriorating? And doesn't that suggest that perhaps the town... It's deteriorating around that basin, or their structure, but the rest of the road is fine. All right, I'm lost in this riddle. Or do you have uh... I mean, I guess this is something that the board wants to think about, where we draw the line on what we maintain and what we don't maintain. I'm planning on filling potholes, so I'm going to fill it because it's many people have hit it and it's... Is this the one with the cone? Yes. Okay. So, you know, it's going to take probably a full wheelbarrow to fill it. You know, but we can ask, you know what I think would be a good idea, I think, we'll see if the board thinks, is if you sit down with Caroline and we said a, a well-articulated description of the problem to the Municipal Association okay, and see if they can provide some guidance on this, does that seem like a... A, a good approach? Yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't know. I, I'm not sure how other municipalities handle it. But. So let's ask the Municipal Association. But they'll want to have a well-articulated so description. For the Water Department to fill in a pothole like Jeff is not going to have to go to. They don't have, my understanding is they don't have a truck to go and haul the, the, the asphalt to, to fill it in with. So that's one problem they've got. Right? And they may have three people working there, but they don't have a means to, to get the product from the plant to the street, so that's part of the problem. That's something that will need to be addressed as well if we decide to go forward and say that. Or, or you're, no. you're, you're, you need to start being more responsible for, for more of these structures. It, it, it's part of the problem, so we should remember that. Well, I think, don't you think, Michael, that the first thing is, though, let's, to find out whose responsibility I agree. it is. Once we know that, then we, then we can you know, granted that they may, they have some resources in some areas, we have some in other areas. So then, but knowing who's at, whose responsibility it is, then we can determine, yeah. So let's just... I think there are other mitigating factors we need to keep in the back of our mind. That 
it's not going to be just a symbol. It's your problem. It's our problem. Absolutely. Or, or at fully, least we use our free, stuff and they come out and use manpower to help me. Yeah. Because that's, yeah. What, that's, yeah. What, that's what the other guys did work at the border. 